What's up, .NET developers? Are you excited after watching the last video on server-side rendering for ASP.NET Core Blazor that's coming out in .NET 8? Well, in this video, I'm gonna show some of the extra little things that you can add to server-side rendering in Blazor to really one-up your .NET applications right here on learning C Sharp and .NET with Isaac. Hey folks, Isaac Levin here with another edition of Learning .NET C Sharp with Isaac, a place where we're gonna learn all sorts of the cool things that are coming out in .NET and C Sharp 12 all the way up to when they both release at .NET Conf in November of 2023. If you're liking this sort of video here, please share to like, subscribe, follow, share with your friends, comment down below, let me know what sort of other stuff you wanna see. And I'm really excited to see some of the things you're building as we get more and more previews all the way up to November. All right, so if you've watched a couple of the previous videos I've done, I did a video on server-side rendering in Blazor. And if you haven't seen that, click the link up here and uh, take a look at that, because I think there's a really cool thing there. Um, one of the things that we did with server-side rendering is we just, uh, in Blazor, is that we just kind of built a really simple example that showed that you can have C-sharp that renders into HTML in the browser, and that's really, really awesome. And you know, you're not dependent on WebSockets, you're not dependent on WebAssembly. It's really, really cool. However, there are some limitations with that approach right now. And I think, you know, what's happened in the last couple of previews of uh, ASP.NET Core 8 is some new things have come out. And I want to show some of the cool things. Specifically, I want to show two things. So one is stream rendering. And two is uh, form submission with uh, server-side rendering in Blazor. So let's actually take a look at what that looks like. So let me hop over to my screen. So um, what I did uh, as a setup for this is I took... Um, our example that we did last time where we had the, you know, just one component and doing all that stuff. Um, but I flipped it on its head a little bit. I took the existing uh, Blazor server template that we have um, as a part of .NET and I kind of repurposed it to be server-side rendered. And let's actually take a look at what I did here. So as you can see here, this is still a .NET 8 project. There's nothing um, really fancy in the project itself. It's obviously using the .NET S uh, web SDK. But if I take a look at the program CS, there's a couple of things that I did. So, and I commented out the things that were included in uh, the Blazor server template and added the things that we need to add for server-side rendering. The first thing that we need to do is we need to um, disable Razor pages in server-side Blazor. Uh, and then we need to, as you remember, we need to add the, use the add Razor components extension as well as add controllers. And then after that, if we scroll down to the bottom, there are a couple of things we need to add here as well. We disable the mapping the Blazor hub and the fallback to our host page. So, cause we don't have a host page anymore cause we're not running on server. So we're mapping our Razor components to main layout and we'll take a look at what that looks like in a second. And then um, we're specifying that Razor component result, uh, which routes to index if we want to use sort of that minimal API approach. And then we have uh, the default controller route as well. So when we take a look at um, our main layout, let's actually just right click here and go to definition. Oh, it's not gonna work there. So let's just open this up here. So let's take a look at what it looked like before. So before it was using a component base and then you had uh, some title and you had just that really small div snippet because we had an app.razor file which had all of the underlying like HTML primitives for um, building that all in. And then we were using Blazor to extract in. So since we're not using like server-side Razor anymore or server-side Blazor anymore, we can modify the main layout.razor uh, uh, Razor component to do similar to what we did earlier. So if you scroll down, as you can see here, I have a doc type HTML, and then I'm adding CSS and um, some other things in there. And then if you scroll down, I'm, I'm using um, the body directive here, which I'm, so that will get passed in. Um, so when we have different pages and different routes, those get uh, filled. And then if you scroll down here, this looks basically like the template that exists for the Blazor server, but it's in main layout, not an app.razor. And then finally, if we take a look at one of our pages here, let's just go to index.razor here. As you can see here, same approach that we had earlier, and when, but I added this little current date is daytime now dot string, and then I'm formatting it into a different string format. So what happens, and let me just uh, run this really quick and then move this over, this browser over here. Let's just minimize this. So, and then if I go here and I click F12 for my developer tools, and let me just move some things around. And if I go to the networking tab here, I'll make this a little bit bigger, and then I refresh, 
As you can see here, I'm just loading the page. I'm loading, um, so I'm loading the initial the initial file, which has that server side rendered uh, code in there. So basically, C sharp is rendering as HTML, and then I'm adding some CSS. But as you can see here, there's no connections to WebAssembly. There's no connections to WebSockets. So we have a server side render page, and we can validate that if we go up to Elements, and then if we just like, for instance, right click on that. Go to inspect, it'll say the current date time. So we have fully fledged HTML. So this is an HTML that gets loaded after the page gets downloaded from the browser. So really, really cool thing. Great for search engine optimization and some other things as well. But there are a couple of limitations currently. And I want to show some of those features like I mentioned a bit earlier. So for instance, like let's go to our fetch data area. So with fetch data, so um, what it's basically doing is it's returning some static data that I had. And, and if you've been a ASP.NET Core developer, you've seen this template, right? But one thing is really interesting. So let's just validate. Let's just go back and let's click on fetch data again. So there is a delay. And the reason why there's a delay is because I'm actually simulating like a API request or a call to a database. And if we actually take a look at our fetch data here, so let's actually pop over to that. As you can see, it's calling this forecast service to get forecast async. And let's actually take a look what that's doing. So open that up. And as you can see, I am zoom in here. I am tasked to link. So I'm delaying three seconds. So what's going to happen every single time this service gets called is that there's going to be a slight delay and that's just simulating an API call. So what if I want to have like some experience for the user while that API ha request is happening, while that database is getting called? Um, I can actually do that using stream rendering. And uh, that's great because if the page just loads, like I mentioned, so let's actually take a look at what that would look like. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is in our main layout.razor file is that we're going to want to add a uh, JavaScript uh, reference. So if we're going to add a reference to blazor.web.js, which is a JavaScript file provided by the .NET team to basically light up stream rendering in this particular case. And then there's one additional uh, attribute that we need to add on our fetch data here. And if I take a look at this, and that is if we have the stream rendering attributes too. So let's just actually build this really quick. Let's build this. And then after that, I'm going to run it. And then hopefully what we'll see is instead of seeing a, uh, let's Instead of seeing just the, the simple, like the page basically loading, it's going to have like some form of, instead of the page is spinning, it's going to have some sort of loading thing. So we click on fetch data. And as you can see here, loading one, two, three, and then it populates with our data. So a much better user experience, right? Because previously, remember, like the page was kind of spinning, like the nothing. And, that, and if we've ever worked with end users, like, typically when they have to wait for things and they're not being told to wait, they, they click on a bunch of things, they might close the browser, they might do a bunch of things, right? So being able to give them some sort of like different experience while our page is loading when it's in the server side rendered mode is really, really valuable. So let's just close out of that. And then the next thing, which I think is really cool to talk about is, you know, posting forms, so form posting. So so here's an example, right? Like maybe you have a web page that has like some simple form, like maybe it's a login screen, maybe it's um, posting something that you wanna show up on the page, some mechanism to basically help the process to rebind our models on our razor components, right? So let's take a look at what that would actually look like if we were to do it using server-side Blazor. So the first thing that we're gonna wanna do is we wanna go to our main layout. And as you can see here, we're in our um, that article class here, and we have the wrapping the body. So what we actually need to do is we need to wrap this with a uh, cascading model builder. So once we do that, so that basically allows us to um, the main layout that basically has that model binder built into it. So then the next thing that we're going to need to do is we're going to have to wire up some things um, in whatever Razor component that we want to basically enable that form post as well as the mechanism to uh, hydrate that data from that form post. So let's actually just go to our index.razor. And what I want to be able to do here is I want to just add like a simple like login form. Um, obviously, there are way better mechanisms that do this, but I just want to show you what you can accomplish um, using this form experience with server side blazer. So let's actually do this. So I'm going to hop over here. I'm in my index and let's just get rid of all of this. So there's nothing in here now, just the page title. So basically what I want to be able to do is I want to have like an edit form. So like the first thing that I want to do, let's just have put a title here. And then this is going to be some message. Right, we're going to define that message in a second. So let's actually go down here, get our code up and running, get our, our, our code behind. And then inside of this, we have a parameter. 
oops, parameter. And in this parameter, this is a public string. And this public string is called message. And it's got to get set on there. And let's just have it say like hello world. So we're going to actually set this at some point to something different in the future. Um, this is not hello world. Let's we can just have this be like, uh, please log in, for instance. Please log in. So what do we want to be able to do at this particular point in time is I want to start to add an edit form. So if you built um, any sort of like uh, form in Blazor, the syntax is going to be very similar. So I'm just going to take an example that I previously had and I'm just going to copy it into here because nobody wants to watch me type and we'll uh, walk through what this actually looks like. Um, so this is our uh, typical edit form. And as you can see here, there's it's using a method post. And it has this uh, user object that's tied to the model, and we're using this on valid emotions handle submit. So there are some things that we need to do to wire this up. So the first thing that we're going to want to do is we're going to inject um, that form data provider that we've used. So form data provider, and then we're going to need to identify what some of these different uh, properties are behind the scenes. So the first thing is let's just um, let's just create a new class. So a public class, and this class is called user. And then inside of here, oh, I have this parameter here. That's why it's freaking out. The extra curly brace. There we go. So I have that. And then I have a name and a password, right? There. All right, there we go. So we have this user, and there's a username and password. And what I want to be able to do is I want both of these fields to be required. And I dot, so I get the component, the data annotations, and this is going to be required as well. All right, so basically we have a, a name and a password for our user model. So now what we need to be able to do inside of our code is we're going to enable a new is so we're going to have a private user and that's going to be of type and that's going to be a object called user. And then the, the last thing that we're going to be able to do or the second to last thing is we're going to have um, that handle submit uh, on valid submit uh, method. So let's actually add one and see what that looks like. So, um, so we're void handle submit. So inside of our handle submit, let's just have this be like a console dot right line. And then this could just be name of handle submit, for instance, just just to basically show that you have um, that it's handling some you can put in your validation logic and all that in there as well. And then finally, let's actually just wire up the pieces to get um, our form submitted. So um, in Blazor world, let's let's just have our protected override in that and we're going to override the on initialize. On initialize. All right, protected override void on initialize. And then inside of here, we're just going to do like a quick check. So we're going to check our form data from the entries. And then inside those entries, we're going to try to get a value. And that value is name because this is the name of the object. So remember, we're using the user. So we're going to check the name and the password. So we're going to check name and password. And inside of here, let's just create a new out variable and let's just call this name. Right. And then we're going to do the same thing for um, our password. So form data dot entries dot try get value password and we have all of that so now we have just some sample code that basically it basically populates a user object that we have earlier so our user object that we're defining here that's actually going to be the model for our form post and then we're setting the name and the password and then we're specifying that message which says welcome whatever right so let's actually just get rid of this and then let's add a little bit of code inside of our HTML template so down here and let's just basically do a check so we're, let's check if user dot name is not null and user dot password is not null and then we're going to close that out and then inside of here we're just going to have just a simple paragraph that says uh, hello user dot name you are signed in. So and basically what this is doing is it's basically just simulating a form post. So obviously you should never do something like this, but I just want to show you what you can do with um, form posting in server side uh, render blazer. So let's actually build this. 
And then let's run this. Gonna bring this over here. So as you can see here now, we have this login page. So if I do this, Isaac, and then I just hide some, some password and click submit. And then it says, hello, Isaac, you are signed in, right? So we basically, we were able to, and you can take a look at the URL here. It's passing in that handler, for example, form, which we're specifying that was the, the, the primary is the name of our form handler, right? So we're passing that in and then our handle submit, which is the on validation of the hand, of that particular form handler. So that's gonna fire this thing right here. So if we actually take a look at the console that's running it behind the scenes, we have handle submit firing, right? So we know that console.writeline is working. So our, if we have some valid input. So, but let's actually take a look at what this looks like when developer tools open. So let's just open up our developer tools and let's just get rid of all this. And then let's go to the network tab and let's just clear all this out. And then we're going to refresh this page. So as you can see here, we're still server side render. There's no uh, uh, web sockets. There's no WASM. So if I put in Isaac and this can be literally anything. So as you can see here, I click submit. And then again, so it's calling in that ways that blazer.web.js and it's um, doing that. It's posting back to that new handler and everything is working as expected. So we could do some things like you can create um, a simple form that allows you to basically pass some data back in and then render that back to the UI, which is pretty valuable in a couple of different senses. So at the end of the day, like this is just a simple example of how you can take a look at some of the server side rendering uh, features that are coming, specifically stream rendering, as well as handling form posts. Um, I really hope you like the content. Be sure to like, subscribe, follow, comment down below if you like it or if you want to see something else. And looking forward to all the sort of great things that we're building up into .NET 8, November 2023. So that's it for me. Hope you have a nice day. Take care.